everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kay, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I DNF'd in the first half of 2019. So I'm going to start with January and then go all the way through June. And uh, total, I have DNF'd 17 books this year, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, mainly because several of them I didn't read more than 50 pages, um, even sometimes just a couple of chapters. I'm just going to go through a brief overview of why I DNF'd them and uh, move right along. So, first off, in January, I DNF'd one book, and that was Lies Chelsea Handler Told Me. I DNF'd this book because I just wasn't into it. it. I did not find it funny. It was basically just a collection of people kind of telling stories and mildly complaining about all of the horrible things that Chelsea's done to them in the time that they have known her. She is uh, known for being a bit of a train wreck. That's kind of her brand. And she's definitely a comedian that you have to be kind of in the mood for and the right mindset for. Um, her brand of humor is kind of very specific and if you don't like it then you really don't like it. And this book wasn't even um, really her being funny. It was other people in her life kind of just talking and I wasn't into it. I tried listening to an audiobook and they each narrated like their own chapter or whatever. Didn't get very far into it. Was more annoyed than amused. So I moved on. In February, I DNF'd two books. The first was Lunar Light by Penelope Fletcher. And I originally picked this book up because it's supposed to be about like a Wendigo. And that's just kind of a mythical folklore creature that you don't really see a whole lot in fiction. I've never come across another book I don't think that had a Wendigo in it. And so that's the whole reason I picked it up. I did read another series by her several years ago that had to do with like fairies or something. And I enjoyed it well enough, but it did have very strong kind of romantic plotline going through a lot of it. And this book, in the small amount that I did read, seemed to be leaning more towards um, not quite erotica, but just definitely romance, definitely like sexy times, and not really my thing. I don't care for that in the books that I read. I'd rather read about kind of anything else. <laughs> I find those that kind of stuff um, typically either boring or just not well done and I just don't care for it. The other book that I DNF'd in February was Foundling by DM Cornish and I did not realize when I picked this book up that it was in fact a like middle grade kind of kids book and um, but because I didn't know that it was, I had I guess different expectations for it and was not uh, in the mood to be reading a kids book. I don't like a lot of middle grade books anyway um, every once in a while here and there, but usually no. And this book, uh, I got a few chapters into it, I think, and there was kind of this, like, twist right at the beginning. Not really a twist, but kind of the character doesn't realize what's happening. Um, but I really did, and was like, ugh, this is gonna be one of those, like, everything's kind of glaringly obvious except to the character because it's a kid. And um, so I, I just put it down, particularly in the beginning of the year. I was trying to get through a lot of the physical TBR books that I had um, because I had recently purged it down to like 50 or so. So I was like, oh, I could, you know, get through at least half of these this year. And um, this was just one of those that I picked it up and decided it definitely wasn't for me. And so I had to get rid of it. Next up in March, I DNF'd four books. And this month, it seems like I was reading a lot of the kind of historical fiction type of books that were on my shelf. So the first one that I DNF'd was Devil's Queen by Gian Calagritis. I had read several of her books uh, years ago. She writes kind of historical fiction with little bits of fantasy, maybe supernatural bits in it. Um, usually kind of in the Mediterranean area, I think a lot of her characters are from Italy, and she focuses on actual historical figures. So there's one about uh, the Borgias, you have, uh, I think, a Medici, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and this one, I can't even remember who the main character was, but I just was kind of bored with it and didn't really feel like reading it ever. And I think I had tried like several times to kind of pick it up and read it and just was like, I don't really want to. And I'd find kind of anything else I could possibly do uh, other than read. So that kind of told me that I wasn't really into it. And because of that, I ended up getting rid of the other book that I had on my TBR that I hadn't read by her, and then actually the other books that I had read previously and kept, um, kind of just figuring that if I'm not 
enjoying those anymore. I'm, I must be kind of out of that phase of my reading life. So I just got rid of the whole batch uh, and made some more space on my shelf. The next book in March that I DNF'd was Galway Bay by Mary Pat Kelly. This is another historical fiction and I bought this probably more than 10 years ago. I got it because at the time I did read a lot of historical fiction but also because it's uh, set in Ireland and I've always kind of loved Ireland and at one point I was picking up a lot of books that kind of took place in Ireland regardless of kind of genre. And so finally I decided to get around to picking this up. I got it in March because you know St. Patrick's Day and it's like a theme, whatever. Uh, I did not like it. I was bored. And that's kind of the running theme, especially with any of the historical fiction books that I've, I've tended to pick up this year. I'm just not excited about them and my interest just isn't really being sparked by anything. So I'm not sure if this is like just a temporary lull in my desire to read historical fiction or if it is like a actual shift in reading taste. At this point I'm not sure but I haven't really found any historical fiction books this year that I really loved. So I'm not really sure where that's going. But anyway, the next book I DNF'd was The Paradise War by Stephen R. Lawhead and I picked this up because I love his King Raven trilogy which is a Robin Hood retelling and then he's written several um, kind of British Isles King Arthur, Celtic kind of stories, which is why I picked them all up. And this one I didn't care for. I didn't really like the main character. The story was kind of eh. And I didn't make it very far at all. I couldn't really tell you what it was about at all, except that I think there was some sort of like going into the Fae, like their realm or something. Not sure. Uh, I didn't like it. So away it went. And then the last book that I DNF'd in March, I DNF'd for a completely different reason. And that was A Long Day in Litchford by Paul Cornell. And I DNF'd this book because it kept talking about Trump. So within the first few pages, one of the characters, um, something happens and she can't really remember what happened the night before, but like I think the police show up. And there just gets to be talk of like Trump and white supremacy and racism and bigotry and sexism and all that kind of thing. And Honestly, at this point, it's so oversaturated on the internet and on TV and everywhere that I really don't need him and that kind of real world crap invading my story. I don't mind reading books that, you know, um, examine racism and bigotry and things of that nature, but I don't need Donald Trump in my fiction. Like, get out. I think if he had been left out of it and it was just kind of examining, you know, racism and things, maybe it would, you know, probably have been fine. But because it had to bring in Trump and all of that, it just was, it was a huge turnoff. I do plan on trying to pick up the fourth book, so I might um, go onto like Wikipedia, read what this one is about, and kind of do a rundown of the plot, see where the characters are at, and then pick up the fourth novella because I did really enjoy the first two. And I'm hoping that the fourth one is kind of maybe a return to form, at least uh, in that sense of not having Donald Trump in it. But we will see. I don't know. That brings us to April. And in April, I only had two DNFs, so this was a bit of a better month for me. The first book that I DNFed was Dear Mr. Potter, which is a um, collection of letters and things that were written to Harry Potter as if he was a real person by uh, a lot of like teenagers and kids and I believe it was written um, after the all of the books were out but before all of the movies were out so it was definitely in like the Harry Potter heyday where the fandom was kind of at its most crazed because we were getting you know we were getting the movies the books had all just come out people were still discussing them. it was like a huge big deal and I'm pretty sure that's when this book was put together I didn't like it because it was written these all these letters were written to Harry Potter as if he were a person and it was a lot of the same stuff in every letter it was just gushing and gushing about like you Harry Potter you saved my life uh you're the best you know your best characters this is the best book I've ever read and I ever will read in my entire life it's the very best thing and it's so amazing and you taught me so much and this and it's just so much like just over the top gushing and it, it was too much. I love Harry Potter. I grew up on Harry Potter, but um, this was a, this was extra <laughs> and it was way, 
way too much for me so I just um, I couldn't get through I didn't read more than 10 or so letters probably overall it was just like the over-the-top ness <laughs> of the whole collection was just it was way too much for me the other book that I DNF'd in April was Scar Night by Alan Campbell this was just a random pickup at the library I was in there one day um, as I said before the science fiction fantasy section at my local library here is really bad uh, there's not a whole lot there there's only like two shelves like two sides of the same shelf uh, and that's all there is and a lot of them are kind of back backlog books there's it's very outdated and you know the series that they have like they'll have books one two and five in a series sometimes which doesn't make any kind of sense to me but um, yeah anyway so I was just in there the one day kind of scanning the shelves was there anything at all that I could possibly maybe find interesting came across this um, I kind of got some like almost gargoyle type vibes from it which is why I kind of picked it up I uh, ended up just not liking it I don't really have any memories of it that's kind of the impression I was left with just nothing except that I didn't like it so uh, I took it back to the library and haven't really thought about it much since so that brings us to May, and in May I DNF'd three books. Two of those were kind of like anticipated, highly anticipated releases in 2019. The first was The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders. This, um, I just, I really didn't like, I got like 30 pages into it I want to say. And I didn't care about the main character, I didn't really care about her whole plight that she was going through. Um, the way that it was written was kind of off-putting, like it's supposed to be like all oh, these things have been translated to like the nearest English equivalent for you know readers or whatever I just wasn't into it and uh, the coolest part was the I think it was like they described it as some sort of like crocodile even though it wasn't really a crocodile that was kinda cool um, but not enough to make me want to read the whole book and then kind of immediately I think after I read that book I then picked up Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James and boy was that a mistake this this was certainly not a book um, written for me at all so it was kind of billed as African Game of Thrones and it was supposed to be very you know dark or whatever I don't know uh, I didn't like it I didn't like it at all I did not make it very far into it I made it through like we meet the tracker guy uh, he talks about his childhood and how terrible it was and then he talks about like his first job or whatever he had to go find some queen or something it was just gross and I am not into like just shock value gross kind of stuff and that's how it felt and I was like I don't want to read this incredibly dense book <laughs> and just have to live in this character's head the whole time and I don't wanna no no so uh, that was a very quick DNF I don't remember how far I made it into it but it was not very far and uh, no regrets on that. I've seen kind of mixed reviews. Some people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's literary and it's amazing. And I didn't necessarily enjoy it, but it was such a good book. And I'm like, maybe that's my problem. Because I'm not into, I guess, like literary fiction or anything like that. That's just not my thing. So, yeah, definitely not for me. DNF'd it real quick. The third book that I DNF'd in May was The Cloud Roads by Martha Wells. Picked this up because I love Murderbot. And I thought, well, I'll read some of her, like, backlist books. And this had, like, shapeshiftery sort of dragon things, whatever they are. And that kind of sounded cool. So that was the first Martha Wells that I then picked up after Murderbot. And I did not care. Again, uh, just kind of bored. It was taking me a long time to get into it. I had kind of no desire to pick it up. was finding kind of anything else to do besides read it. And that was a sign to me that was like, okay, yep, this is not for you. So away it had to go as well. And then that brings us to June, in which I had five DNFs. So the uh, biggest DNF month, I believe, so far of the entire year. So the first DNF of June was Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. This book um, was a giant waste of time and a bit of a train wreck. So the whole kind of idea is that it's Eurovision, in space so it's like this music competition and it's sequins and flashy sparkly bits and whatever nothing happened it's less than 300 pages I think I read about half of it somehow I managed to kind of push through and nothing was happening um, you meet Decibel Jones which is gonna be your main character who's gonna compete in this um, 
this competition. He's this washed up musician who's saying weird music, basically. Um, the aliens come and say, "Hey, you guys have to compete in this competition. If you don't, uh, if you don't win, or if you lose, I should say, if you lose, you all will die." And then they scoop up Deskwell's old bandmate, the only one that's still alive. They get on a spaceship and they fly off towards whatever planet. That's all that happens in the first half of the book. Now, all of that should have been able to happen in like 20 pages. And instead, I believe it was like 100 or more pages. The rest of those pages were filled up with nonsensical sentences that were way, way, way too long because they were just jam-packed with adjectives that don't really go together and I think that's why they were put together. It's like, look how nonsensical and weird I can be. I'm gonna put 15 adjectives all together in a string. It's not gonna make any sense. You're gonna reread the sentence a few times trying to figure out what the hell I'm even saying and guess what? It doesn't matter because none of it matters anyway. Anything that wasn't the, the small bit of plot that I just told you about was just, the rest was just tangents. So it'd be like blah blah blah, plot plot plot, and then all of a sudden let's talk about this alien race over here and how how their sentience is. So you know, they, whatever their little planet is like and their culture and their society, whatever, this is how they are. And then we're gonna bounce over here to this one and, and talk about this alien life form. And then we're gonna go over here and it's like, None of, none of that matters. I don't care. I really don't. And it would just kind of go on and on about these random alien races, forgetting, apparently, that there's an actual plot supposed to be happening. And so I uh, had to just quit. I made it as far as I could, but I just couldn't take it anymore. It was, it was literally, I could only read it in like 20 minute chunks. It was just making my head hurt to read and uh, that's not fun and I read because it's enjoyable so that book uh, I chucked it right on back to the library not for me so the next book that I DNF'd in June was Child of a Mad God by R.A. Salvatore and this was another random uh, pickup at the library it was in on the shelf uh, that has all the new books that they get that month and there was a very very slim selection for sci-fi fantasy I always check it every time I go in just in case. The cover looked interesting. I had of course heard of R.A. Salvatore because he's wrote like a million books. I had never read an R.A. Salvatore book before, but this had an interesting cover so I picked it up and apparently he's written in this like world before and I don't know if that's necessary to read those first or not. And so I just really didn't like it. It seemed to be going in this direction of like oppressing women and you had the barbaric tribe who like raids this other village and kills a bunch of people and steals women and children for slaves and I just wasn't in the mood for it I guess. I don't know. It didn't seem like something I really wanted to be reading. Characters were kind of eh and I didn't care. So I just took that back and moved on. The next two books that I have on my list that I DNF'd in June were both audiobooks that I listened to or attempted to listen to. The first is Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. I don't remember what it was actually about. I did not listen to very much of it. I kind of had thought it was going to be sort of like a memoir, chatty thing about, you know, um, women's need to apologize for asking for what they want or for saying what they actually want because we've kind of been conditioned to do that in our society. Uh, so I thought it was going to be like, you know, overcoming that kind of knee-jerk reaction to apologize for everything. And maybe that is what it's about, but I, the only impression, the only person that I have from this book, from listening to it, was like, oh wow, you're annoying. And you need to like stop talking now. And I just shut it off. It did not take very long. Uh, I felt, I don't know, I, I, that's kind of the only memory I have I know I was like getting ready to do dishes, I was like, oh, I'll listen to an audiobook, do some housework, get things done, and just remember being supremely annoyed <laughs> and shutting it off. The second audiobook that I DNF'd in the month of June was Dad is Fat by Jim Gaffigan. Went into this because I had assumed it was going to be funny. That was kind of the whole purpose there. And I mean, I guess it could have been, except that it was just on and on about like his kids and his super hot, awesome wife 
and how great being a parent was and his kids and his kids and his kids and that was no no uh i'm not into reading books that are all about like the joys of parenthood or anything like that just not my thing and um so i was listening to it in the car mostly and just i just couldn't take it anymore it's like it never moved past i thought maybe that would just be like a part of it but it did it wasn't really moving past that so um i shut that off and turned it to the library as well and then the last book that i dnf'd in june was cleopatra by karen essex i had previously read a book or two by her and uh historical fiction as some of the other dns have been this one I got because I had found the second one, the sequel, um, Pharaoh, at a second-hand bookstore. And I'd seen it there several times and it never got bought. And the cover looked really cool. And it was Egypt. And it was Cleopatra. And it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I picked it up and I was like, well, now I have to get the first one from the library so I can get to this one. And so I did. And I did not like it either. It was bizarre. So you have Cleopatra. And then she's got a couple sisters, and her oldest sister is actually her half-sister. They have different fathers. And when Cleopatra's mother dies, her older half-sister marries her father. So it's not really incest, but it's still weird as hell. And I get why she did it, because of the time period, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. It was weird and kind of gross. And uh, plus she was terrible. She was just a jerk. And... Then you had this other character, and I forget if he was like a tutor or something. I don't know. It The whole book of what I read of it, okay, not the whole book. So what I read of this book seemed to be oddly kind of focused on weird sexual like fetishes or just weird sex stuff. And I don't like sex in my books anyway. I definitely don't need odd fixations with... Um, you know, fetishes or whatever. I, I honestly can't remember what it was, but I didn't like it. <laughs> and so I returned that book to the library without finishing it, and then I got rid of Pharaoh. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's one way to clean off my TBR shelf, is just to keep DNFing all the books. Because that seems to be what um, has been happening a lot this year. Every time I'm picking up books off of that shelf, I tend to apparently DNF them. And that might be because a lot of those I, I bought several years ago. Um, my reading tastes were extremely different. And so that might be why. And then on top of the fact of, you know, I do have access to the library, which has all of these books, a lot of which I am excited to actually get to and I really want to read. So picking up these books that I had a passing interest maybe in like, you know, 10 years ago, I'm less inclined to care because they have just been sitting there and a lot of the time I was buying books not because I had a strong desire to really read them I was just buying books because I had kind of a an addiction to buying books and that's not good so anyway that's all I have for today thanks for sticking around like and subscribe down below if you want to uh, leave a comment if you have read or DNF'd any of these books and uh, let me know what you thought of them if anyone has any suggestions for some good books that have different types of creatures like wendigos and gargoyles and things of that nature that you don't normally see in your run-of-the-mill like fantasy sci-fi type of book also comment that, that down below because I'm always looking for more uh, kind of creatures in my stories so that's it for today thanks for sticking around I will see you guys later bye